Welcome back to the Real Quick with Mike Swick podcast. Today we have an absolute legend uh, on the show. A legend not in MMA, but a legend from Hollywood. Uh, Mickey Rourke is joining us. A man who knows Mike Tyson and has known Mike Tyson for a long period of time. We've obviously all watched the fight this past weekend with Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. So what better person to recap the show, talk about it, uh, share his thoughts than Mickey Rourke, uh, Hollywood legend, boxer, uh, and and obviously a friend of Mike Tyson and, and many other boxers as well. So, uh, yeah, I, this is the second time he's been on the show. It's an honor to have him on the show each and every time. We always have a great conversation. So let's talk to Mickey. All right, Mickey, welcome back to the show. It's an honor to have you back on again, buddy. Ah, uh, you don't have to call it an honor. Pleasure. No, it's an honor, man, for me. It's an honor for sure. Well, I don't see that many people, you know, I mean, I don't leave the fucking house. Yeah, I was going to ask you, you're in L.A. right now, right? I'm in L.A., yeah, look, you know, I got, I got like 94 masks. <laughs> it's crazy in America right now. It's like I'm seeing all the news and it's just like, yeah. it's like apocalypse. Well, it, it's weird, even like going out at night, you know, Yeah. when I go around the block to do my running, if I see somebody like 20 yards away, I, you know, put the mask on and then I'll run like 40 meters with the mask still on. I'm going, I can't fucking breathe, you know, take it off, run Yeah, yeah. until I see somebody else, then back up. Strange time. Yeah. All every gym is closed right now uh, since the last three weeks. So uh, even the pool where I would go swim, do my laps, the pool is closed. So because swimming was part of my training great cardio and uh it's a it's a very spooky strange strange time and like even like close friends i don't have that many but uh i won't let over because i don't know what they've been doing yeah it's crazy you know and i'm not going to take somebody's word for it if they go oh i've been masking you know yeah and then even if i have somebody <laughs> come over i'll wear a mask because yeah. i don't want to get this yeah are you getting are you getting your training in? Are you doing it at home? Are you doing it like selected places? Let, let me let me give let me show you my kitchen and my living room, all right? <laughs> I can he imagine. He was gonna follow. He was gonna follow me. I think right? I see some weight plates already. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Here's the kitchen. Turn wait, can you see it? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Speed bag in the kitchen, uh, upper cup bag. <laughs> Pull up bar, hold on. Nice. Over here. Can you see that? Nice. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, there's nowhere to walk oh, around. Oh, there's, you know. <laughs> and then you got that bag then, too. Yeah, come here. Wait, I got to show you the living room. Hold on. This is the. Wow. This used to have furniture in it. Hey, wow. So when I get up at night, I forget all the weights are on the floor. So I fall down like at least three times a night. <laughs> but you're getting your work in though. That's the important thing. You might as well take this time to do that. Yeah. That's ah, crazy, man. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So I get, obviously I got to ask you a uh, big fight this past weekend, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones Jr., obviously a couple other fighters as well. Um, you know Mike, obviously, and, and you you fought boxing and, and, and fought later on and, and stuff like that. What was your overall take on, on just the show and the fight and, and Mike and everything else? You know, I tell you, it, it, the fight was on my mind every day for two weeks because that's all believe it or not that's all anybody talked about yeah it was a big fight what do you, what do you think who do you think so i give my opinion you know which which we gradually change so let me start with this as soon as they turned the the fight on i i looked at the ring and i went that looks like a 14-foot ring. That looks like a small ring. It was small, yeah. So I was thinking, okay, that's that's going to favor Mike. Yeah. And then one thing that I always did when I fought is the night before, two days before, in my contract, I always put, it's got to be a fast track. Because I, I used to like to move around laterally. And if it's not a fast track, if it's a padded ring, you can't move around as much. So I noticed, I could tell when they started to fight that it was a slow track. Yeah. 
So two things right away was small ring, slow track. That's going to favor Mike. Right. Okay. Then, you know, because everybody was talking about the fight so much, you know, I, you know, it was on my mind for two weeks. And I'm trying to analyze it. Now, lots of times when I was fighting, if there was nobody else to fight in the gym, spar with in the gym, I'd go in and spar with a heavyweight. Yeah. Which, which is not a good idea. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I remember I did okay with a couple of them, but I got in one time with a guy who was the number one ranked cruiserweight amateur in the world who later went on to become heavyweight champion of the world when he beat Klitschko, a fighter named Lehman Brewster. Wow. And I remember going like two rounds with him and he, he was cracking me to the body. Like, like I'm going, what's going through my mind is what the fuck am I doing in here? <laughs> yeah, and then we were why. supposed to spar three rounds. Yeah. <laughs> and after two rounds, I said to him, Lehman, I had enough. You know, it was like, you know, so it's like, Anything over 210 pounds, you know, you shouldn't go near if you're a 168 pounder. Yeah. So that was the other thing that goes through my mind is you got an ex 68 pounder who's put on weight going in a natural like 215 guy, which is, you know, not a great idea. Um, so I thought. Okay, if Roy can get past three rounds, he's got a shot. Yeah. Then, in my head, I went, as the, as the fight grew closer, I went, if Roy can get past one round, he's got a shot. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Looked, yeah, Mike looked crazy on those pads. Right. And then it's, when I saw the, the slow track and the, and the small ring, I went, uh fuck, that's, that's really going to favor Mike because Roy's going to use what made him one of the greatest fighters of all time. He's going to use his lateral speed and his right. jab and move, move around. Then I found out it's 12-ounce gloves, not 10. And there is a big fucking difference. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, hate, I used to hate sparring in 16-ounce gloves. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just... I used to try to get away with 12 ounce, you know, or 14 ounce. Um, but everybody would bitch and cry about that. But anyway, yeah. I'm going, okay, 12 ounce gloves. That's going to take away some of Mike's punch. And it's going to take also, it's going to take away Roy's speed. So I'm thinking now there's another equation there. there because of there is a big, big difference. Yeah. Uh, you guys fight what in six ounce gloves, right? Four, four ounce gloves in the UFC. Yeah. Holy shit! Wow, yeah. that, that was that's an experience. I I wait till the I wait till the next <clears throat> lifetime. I know what you mean oh. though, because I know what you mean because when we spar at AK, we spar really hard, so we we have to yeah. wear sixteen ounce gloves to spar in because we spar yeah. hard and, and they're heavy. And then when you get the fourteen ounce back on or the twelve ounce, you feel that huge difference of how light they are. But we wear the 16 because it helps the speed and it helps yeah. obviously absorb yeah. for your opponents. But yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a big difference, when, especially when they're wet and you're sweaty and everything else. Yeah. Well, you guys got all, so many other weapons you use too. Yeah. I mean, and then I look at you guys' fight, which I have so much respect for, is you, you go five minutes. Yeah, it's a long time. <laughs> and, you know, we fight as boxers you know, three minutes, which if you're not in shape, you know, you're sucking your own dick after one round, you know, I yeah. mean, five minutes to me, when I see you guys fight, I got so much respect in the world because I go, how did they do it? And then they hit each other with those six ounce gloves. And I'm going to, you know, that it, the MMA, MMA world is just like, it's insane. It's like just yeah. something I... I'm, I've been a fan since Vitor. I met Vitor when he was 19. Yeah, yeah, that was when and, he was killing it. Yeah, and, and Vitor at the time was 230. Yeah, <laughs> he was shredded. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but to get back to the, the to the Mike and Roy, the whole thing with the small ring, 
the slow track, the 12 ounce gloves. Cause I didn't know. And then the two minute round. Yeah. And I'm thinking that's going to favor Mike because Mike spite Mike fights in spurts. Yeah. And I think he's good. You know, we all, anybody who's got any experience learns to pace yourself. But, you know, he could throw more of those spurts, in a two round, you know, two rounds, than a two minute round than a three minute round. Right. So I thought that would be very dangerous for Roy. The, the thing that everybody's saying, Mike, 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 Mike. But, you know, anybody who knows anything about fighting knows speed kills. Yeah. All right. You could be the biggest puncher in the world. Speed rules. Nothing more deadlier than speed. And I thought, you know, if Roy has got, got a chance in the world, it's going to be his speed. Because with Mike, who's a puncher, that's the last thing to go on any, on, on any, on any banger. You lose your hand. You lose your reflexes first. You lose your speed. Then you lose your balance. Then you start to get a little chinny. But the punch, you, you take that to the grave with you. Yeah. You know? And so I thought Mike is still going to carry in that the, the heavy punch, which you see, you saw when he caught Ray, I think, uh, with the right, he, he hit him with a really hard right hook to the Yeah, yeah. he was to, nailing him with the those body. body shots. And I think Roy spun, spun out of it, you yeah. know? And, but I think after the second round, I got a little nervous for Roy because I, I thought, just from my perspective, and I could be wrong, I thought his legs betrayed him very early on because the old Ray would have moved laterally or, you know, around the ring using the, using the jab and what have you. Uh, I mean, one of the greatest of all time. Yeah, he was. And, and he's not a guy that used to hold a lot. You know, there was a lot of, so there was a lot of clinching which is going to favor Mike because Mike could come up, you know, he'll do that little tap to the, to the kidney and then the, the uppercut yeah. and the left hook and then the uppercut again. So it's like, I think after about the third round, I had no idea what was going to happen. I'm going, okay, maybe Roy's going to get his legs back uh, or Mike's going to, Mike's going to catch him. Uh, against the ropes and say la vie it's going to be over uh, and then it was just it was I thought it I I, I thought because it I was I was surprised that it was a two round two round fight you know so that or that threw me off it. too with which I really thought would favor Mike tremendously now everybody since the fight, says Tyson won, Tyson won, Tyson won. Uh, I don't particularly, and when Mike was being interviewed before the fight, he said the thing that any fighter is going to say. There ain't, no, there ain't no such thing as an exhibition. You know, yeah, of you're going in there yeah, we, we and with knew. your natural instinct, you're going to go in there and you're going to want to rip him a new asshole. Yeah. All right? There's no like, oh, you hit, like, you know, in the, in the gym and you spar, if you hit somebody too hard, yeah, you back up and give them time to recuperate. You know, everybody except Tommy Hearns. Um, <laughs> Jesus, that was, that was a mistake. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they both went into fight. They both went in to hurt each other. Uh, there were flashes of, 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 of Roy's lateral movement and, and tricky, you know, no look punches, you know, yeah. you, you know, you, you know, a lot of people are, a lot of people think fighters are stupid. Most fighters that are really great fighters are really smart. Yeah, of course. They have very high, they have a very high IQ, and your your best fighters have what's called a fighting IQ. You know, like my friend David Hay. You know, he's he's smart out of the ring, in the ring, you know, wherever. You talk to the guy, super intelligent. Sugar Ray Leonard, you know. Then there's some great ones that aren't that sharp, but you know, uh, I'm not going to mention their names because yeah. we're friends. But uh, they're just wild. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> but but in but in the ring, they still have fighters IQ. Yeah. You know, uh, Duran especially. You know, uh, and I used to love to spar Duran because, well, he was I was a, I'm physically I'm a natural 168 pounder or 75 pound. He's a natural lightweight. Yeah. So it was not like when I would spar with Tony, you know, and get punished every round for three years, which I don't know why I did that, but yeah. <laughs> I guess it was to prove something to myself. Uh, and I, I don't, I never won one round, but uh, what was I talking about? Here goes the brain damage thing again. Uh, fighter, I, fighter IQ. You know, both Mike... Mike is, you talk to Mike outside the ring, he's a very, very smart guy, you know. But people have, for many years, used to portray fighters as stupid people. Yeah. Because maybe, you know, you, if you meet a fighter that's, you know, had one too many, you know, guys that are shot, you know, that, you know, I think that's where that comes from. Yeah. Um, but both Roy and Mike have, they're, they're intelligent, and they both have high level of, of fighter IQ. And I think that's why the fight went the distance, because they both used to the best of their ability what each one brought to the table. Mike, you know, his punching power, and Roy, his, his, his movement. Yeah. I don't think, I, I don't, when people go, Mike won, Mike won, or this or that, and I don't, I don't at the end of the day, it wasn't so much about that because when you take a fighter that's taken off 20 years and another guy that is past his prime, it, it's, it's, uh, it's more of a curiosity. Uh, you're not going to see what you saw 20 years ago right. when guys are in their 50s. You're not going to see it. There's only maybe one guy around that can do that, but not, you know, uh, you're just not going to see it. You know, it's, it was... I think that's why everybody talked about it because it was such a curiosity piece, piece, uh, with speed against power. Right. And at, there were flashes during the whole fight were both brought to the table, what they're all about. And uh, for me, it was it was a, I w it was something I enjoyed. I enjoyed seeing two guys that were the greatest, that were the greatest ever, during their era, and will go down in history as two of the greatest ever. Right. No. And so it was a, an event that, uh, and I give both of them a lot of love and a lot of credit and a lot of respect to, to put their ass on the line and go back and do it after, you know, being on the shelf for a while. Right. You know, I mean, look at how many people watched it. I mean, it's insane. You know, I mean, I think people who watched part two. Yeah. You know, just because of who they are. I, I was very impressed with, with their performance considering the variables, considering how old they were. You know, Mike Tyson being 54, the fact he's been out of the ring for 15 years, uh, Roy Jones Jr. being, you know, obviously past his prime, but not just past his prime, but in his 50s as well, and been yeah. out of the ring for three or so years as well. So I thought they did, I was very impressed with their performances, but at the same time, I was worried as well because, like, you don't want to see them get hurt you know you don't want to see them take damage at that age and you don't know what the damage could cause at that age we've never seen really 50 plus year old fighters fight so you know i was worried about that but i was very impressed with like tyson's movement and and roy jones was was trying i, I agree with you that his he was slower uh he wasn't getting off uh as much as he used to so that was a struggle, but I was uh, satisfied at the way it ended. Being a draw, they were happy enough, you know, nobody got hurt. Yeah, but you, yeah, yeah, but you know, the main thing is nobody nobody gave up. Nobody yeah, quit. They, exactly. They gave it their best. We got our money's worth. We got a show. We got, to, we got to see two of our favorite legends of all time, you know, do something that was special. And uh, I'll be honest, I'd watch part two, you know. Do you think? Do you think? Because it seemed like there was a Legends League kind of thing going on here. I don't know if that's Mike Tyson's or whoever's. It seems like they're going to start doing this. 
Do you, do you think this is something that, that might pick up as far as these older legends coming back and fighting again? Like maybe Mike Tyson and Evander. Um, Roy Jones has showed interest in fighting Anderson Silva, which is a very interesting match because Anderson Silva is not a boxer, but yet a dynamic striker. Um, and so there's talks of those two fights potentially happening. Um, but this Legends League kind of leads you in to believe that they're going to start this kind of uh, older generation past, past the prime, but legendary figures fighting. Yeah. What, what do you think overall on that? I think I, I think it's uh, it'll be a, like like this thing. It'll be a, a, a tremendous curiosity. I don't think so much. Look, if they do their training, and 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 if they do, they here's the one thing: they got to train. They got to train the same way they trained to be what they were. Right. You got to you got to put in your ten to twelve weeks. All right. So, so if they can get back, if they can get past seven, eight weeks of, you know, dedicated training, they'll be all right the night of the fight. You know, you'll know after four or five weeks, can I do this? You know? Yeah. Yeah, I know you're absolutely right. And we'll see. I mean, there's there's a lot of uh, speculation of what's going to happen and who knows. It, luckily, they made it out safe. They were happy. They they both had good performances according to themselves and, and to us as well, being the, the circumstance. Um, they fought hard. I was impressed. Um, moving on to the, the co-main event, what do you think about – what would you think about the Jake Paul fight versus Nate Robinson? And then also what do you think about these guys like uh, Jake Paul coming in uh, and taking on boxing now and trying to fight these other celebrities and, and athletes and, and, and such and, and how that is going to be what seems to be the new kind of trend of what's going on for these guys trying to be more alpha. I, I think if he's got, if he has the desire, that's number one. And if he has somebody that's working, that's training him, that has his well-being, that cares about his well-being and gets him the right fights at the right time, there's nothing wrong with that. As long as the kid's got the desire, you know, God bless him. You know, uh, you can see that he's learning to faint, you know, um, the basketball player ate for the faints, you know, and, yeah. you know, so, you know, you got to, you know, everything's about the left jab. Boxing is all about one punch, the left jab, you know, the double jab. Everything else comes later, but you camouflage all your big stuff with your jab. You know, if you want to go downstairs to the liver, you know. You could throw, you could throw like a jab, and then slip over and go to the liver, or you could throw a jab, a right hand, slip over to the liver. You know, so everything's about learning to camouflage stuff. You know, like when you, my last fight, I was on the phone for a month with Mickey Ward because I was working on the liver shot, right. and Mickey was famous with that. And he told me something so important that I don't think anybody else could have told me because he nobody threw it better than him and Chavez. Is he said, when you set up the left hand to the liver, when you throw your left jab, don't make it a power jab because you'll be too much this way. Make it a fast flicking jab so you can step, step over and you don't want to reach back. You want to do and then throw it from here. Yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to do this and then do this. You want to do it all in one motion. Right. You know, so it's like as long as the, the kid Paul, is that his name? Jake Paul. He he did yeah, he was he was throwing that jab and and, and fame. Yeah, as long as he just uh, works on the basic stuff and has good good advice, you know, and they you know, they bring him the right luggage, you know, for the right time, get him the right fights. Let me ask you, being a boxer yourself and uh, this being kind of a new trim with a lot of celebrities and athletes that might not be, uh, you know, obviously experienced boxers that want to get into it. I'm not saying Jake Paul is an experienced boxer or he's good. He's got a long way to go for sure, but he does have yeah. some experience and he, and he is doing pretty decent. Do you Is it safe to say what happened to Nate Robinson being flatlined like that is a message that this is a real – sport i mean this is something where all for, up until this point we haven't seen that devastating of a knockout have you ever seen a basketball game where like a big fight goes out yeah of course have you seen them throw punches i have but it not ended yeah. like that <laughs> no, no but i'm saying it it's no i know what you're saying either, yeah 
he was a tremendous basketball player, but he, he doesn't have he doesn't have boxing is not in his DNA. Yeah. You know, I give him I give him, I give him all the respect in the world yeah, because for sure. to have your first fight, everybody's nervous. Yeah, absolutely. And you you're know? nervous because of that. What happened to him is the exact reason why you're nervous, because you don't want yeah. that to happen. And so I, I think that's why I was saying that that's going to be kind of a message to these other people that are going to get in there, these celebrities and people that are not as experienced. They're, they finally got to see what could happen when you play in this realm. And I think before that, we haven't seen these celebrities get to the level where they got flatlined like that. And, and took a loss where now Nate's getting ridiculed by the entire sports community, including the basketball community. I think now that sent a message to a lot of these guys that aren't in the boxing realm. They're thinking about fighting other celebrities and fighting other athletes and whatever, that this is a serious, you know, fighting is a serious thing. And what happened to Nate is something that can happen to you. So make, make sure that this is something that you want to do if you're going to challenge somebody. Well, I think the, the, the young kid that beat Nate, you know, had, he had a little more boxing IQ and boxing uh, training than Nate did. It didn't look like, because you know Nate went for for faint, he went for feints and he yeah. went, and he didn't have, he was throwing like the flurries and there was no technique and, you know, if he wants to try it again and, and take a year, a year, to you know to to pursue it. And learn the fundamentals. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's crazy. Do, do you think like so? So being that Conor McGregor had zero. I mean, he's obviously one of the greatest fighters of all time. Mad respect to him. And I want to give mad respect to Nate for just taking that fight and for fighting and, and, and Jake as well. But for Conor McGregor to, to be one of the greatest fighters of all time, who's done what very few people actually no one's done a lot of what he's done in the sport of MMA to go on to fight Floyd Mayweather uh, as a O and O boxer to fight the best in the world and to be the second highest grossing pay-per-view of all time. Do you think there's a possibility that someone like Jake, cause he's, he's aiming for Connor, by the way, do you think there's a possibility just because of the money, the fame and, and this new social media age that that fight could possibly happen one day where someone like Jake could get to a point where he would fight Connor uh, even though Connor's pedigree is so much higher, if he if the kid takes his time and has let's say 15 more fights, it would make sense. Just for the money wise and the fame wise and the the, the I'm saying thing. yeah, but it would you know he needs to take you know have 15 more fights to fight somebody like Connor. Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, you know, Connor's a very a good unorthodox boxer. fighter that you know he, he hits you from two feet away. Yeah. I mean, you know. Uh, he's naturally a fighter by nature, you know. Yeah. Um, he's got a shitload of experience. Absolutely. So it's like you'd want to have, I would say, at least 15 more fights. I mean, people may agree, disagree with me, but, you know, um, if you're going to take that chance, or if I was going to take that chance, I would make sure that I would give a respectable performance right that i wouldn't that i wouldn't uh disappoint myself and disappoint the people because a lot of people come to see you get your ass kicked yeah and i remember me with me especially and i remember i'm not giving them that fucking that ain't an option you know what i'm yeah. saying yeah that's why i would trade my ass to the bone you know yeah uh I'm not going to give the haters that opportunity. Right. No fucking, you know. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people that come to see you to see you lose. Actually, you know. Uh, I remember when I was a kid. I was in the same gym with Ali for several years when he refused to go into the army, and he was hated. He was hated. You know, 15 years later, you walk into an arena. And everybody's going, Ali, Ali, yeah. Ali. But for close to a decade, people hated him. He stood his ground and, and his beliefs. and uh... He stood his ground, but he also, you know, he paid for it. He lost, he lost everything. You know, he was flat broke. Yeah. And he, and he was, and I, I remember it, and he was truly hated. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the greatest fighters of all time, who's, who is the most underestimated heavyweight champion I think ever 
is Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes, probably him and Tommy Hearns have the two greatest jabs of any fighters ever. And Larry Holmes was hated because he beat an old Ali. But Larry Holmes was a tremendous fighter. Right. He had a fast left hook, fast straight right hand. He even threw a left hook to the body, which Ali never threw. Mm -hmm. And he kept all his marbles. But he was never, unfortunately, he was never appreciated. Yeah. And I like Larry a lot. Yeah. And, uh, but he was always just never appreciated. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. All right, guys, I hope you're enjoying the podcast, but we have to thank our sponsors really fast. The first being Manscaped, the official trimmer of the UFC, and now the official trimmer of the Real Quick with Mike Swick podcast. And yours truly, precision engineered tools for your family jewels, the best below the waist men's grooming products on the market, bar none by far. And now you can save 20% off and get free shipping by entering code QUICK at manscaped.com. M-A-N-S-C-A-P-E-D.com. Enter code QUICK. You get 20% off and you get free shipping. And because you entered code QUICK, that lets them know that I sent you, which means you support the podcast. You get the best below the waist men's grooming product on the market. You save 20% and you get it shipped right to your door for free. Everybody's a winner. As always, this podcast is brought to you by AKA Thailand, the world's premier luxury training resort in Phuket, Thailand. You can go to akthailand.com and save 30% by booking all group training classes right now. And that's good for any time in the future. So post-quarantine, pandemic, uh, 2021, 22, 23, whenever. It looks like January 15th is when uh, the borders are going to open back up in Thailand. We don't know for certain on that, but it's definitely coming soon. So go to akthailand.com right now. You can save 30%. If you have any questions, you can email info at akthailand.com and we will get back to you immediately. If you're not familiar with the gym, here's our commercial. What's up, everybody? I am here in Thailand. This is the first time I've ever been here. Been dying to come here for years. Mike Swick, he's one of the big reasons he's been trying to pull me down here. What he built down here, AKA Thailand, is incredible. There's people here from all over the world. You can train mixed martial arts here, jujitsu. They have weightlifting, they have cardio, and obviously they have Muay Thai, boxing, everything. telling you guys I know everybody wants to go to Thailand because Thailand's so cool but you can't come to Thailand without coming to aka Thailand come on on the on the show on the production side uh being a boxer did you did you watch the weigh-ins when they weighed in and they faced off it, yes it, 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 what did you think about that glass thing that they went into and and then the division uh in between them and why hasn't anybody ever thought about that before I, I thought that was amazing that like they could go in there it was crystal clear you know it was glass and then I didn't even notice when Jake Paul and and Robinson went in there that they couldn't touch each other um no and I, they, I, I wasn't even aware of that yeah they had a glass I, or, or a plexiglass a divider yeah. between them so they couldn't touch each other so they didn't have to have a promoter like fighting them off they were inside of a an actual glass or, pl or plexiglass uh container and so they couldn't yeah, actually I, touch i always love watching the face off before a fight yeah i love it you know there were certain guys that like with tyson or duran you know or tony or, or tapia you know it would be like you don't know what the fuck's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, and I think because of Tyson, that's why they did that, just to be safe. <laughs> just yeah. be, they made well, sure. Well, you know, it, it's, but it's part of the show. You know, yeah. it's, it, it's they, they were doing it 200 years ago. Uh, it's just, it's part of the whole thing. I think, you know, it's, it just, it goes with, you know, I think they had to partition because of the COVIDs or because of, they were afraid they were going to get it on. 
Yeah. Do you know? Yep. Oh no no the, they they were doing it. Um, I I would assume because the they, they didn't want them to touch each other and 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 have a fight or something or that, because they're already COVID tested so. That's my take on it. And and I agree that it is interesting to watch the kind of pushing and shoving, but they seem, you know, usually that that's not what they want and the promoters are trying to stop them and this is don't touch each other. They're real strict about don't do it, but nobody's ever thought about just putting a piece of glass between them and then they don't have to worry about anything. This is the first time I've ever seen that done where they actually walk yeah, into I, a container. I hope, they, I hope they don't keep I, I hope they don't keep it. I love watching the face off. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it does add to the you dynamic, know? but for the show's it's sake, if they don't the want you, yeah, if they don't want you touching, then that would be the way to solve it for sure. I would think. Um, but but yeah, I mean that was it, that was interesting to say the least. What do you think about how all these fights not not only this one, which did I I thought a fantastic job being a one off show, but also the UFC. Uh, what do you think about these uh, shows that are continuing through COVID and 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 having these fights with no audiences and and continuing to push forward as Dana was the trailblazer of uh, with the UFC? I mean, I don't know how many shows they've done. I mean, it's I'm talking like they've probably done 50 or 60 shows since this COVID thing happened. Yeah, I think you know what I think it's the same thing. Like I've done three movies during this COVID period. All right. Everybody gets tested like three days a week, three times a week. Uh -huh. It's mandatory masks on the set. I even told the producer, if there's somebody on the on the set that doesn't have a mask on, it's going to be their last fucking day. Yeah. You know, so I think as long as they keep it like very limited, very, very, very limited audience that are all sitting 10 rows apart and not, and not even like a couple hundred people. I'm saying, keep it real. Keep it, keep it real small. Yeah. No, I agree. You know, like under 50, you know, under 50 people. Um, I think they're taking, they're taking great precautions. They're testing everybody two, three times and everything. Um, even the people that go in got to get tested. Yeah, Fight Island is like a it's like a space center. I mean, it's like it's like a bubble. They have, you know, Yoss Island and when you go on to Yoss Island, the entire thing is like a it's like out of Star Wars. I mean, they're wearing suits and like every single person in, inside that bubble has been tested and and they don't have COVID. It's crazy the the effort and the work they're putting into keeping these fights going. But as a fan, you have to enjoy the fact that we get to watch these fights. Uh, continuously yeah. every week, almost well, well now it is every weekend. Uh, the the UFCs um, every single weekend, even through this COVID, because they've done this and they've and they've allowed these uh, these fights to go on. Well, I live for Saturdays, okay, yeah. so I can watch the UFC. And then I hate it when there's a UFC fight on, and the same fight time, and there's a boxing match that I want to see on, so I gotta. Since I'm not like, like mechanically inclined at all, I gotta call Dima. Dima, can you record this one and then I'll see this one afterwards? And then I gotta choose what do I want to see live, which one do I? Because and I won't answer the phone because yeah. I don't want somebody call me up and say, "Did you see that?" I, I need I I don't want to hear about it. You know, I, I don't want to hear who won before I see the fight. Yeah, it, it's crazy, and I'm, I'm excited they're they're keeping them going. Um, as far as outside of fighting, so you've you've done a movie with Bella Thorne. You got the Tapia story with uh, Diego Sanchez uh, coming up. You got Cowboy in a movie, Commando. Cowboy, I gotta tell you something. Cowboy is a fucking natural. Yeah. No, he was he was great, and uh, he even made made the movie better because he had a shitload of motorcycles he put in his truck and brought down to the set so uh and he had a fight scene uh oh uh, the choreographer who did the fight scene was great because he's an ex he's a you know a, a jujitsu guy himself so cowboy had this fight scene with a couple of guys it was incredible yeah you know i'm sitting there looking for a place to sit watch 
And I'm going, wow, this is going on for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> and he's doing and he's doing it in cowboy boots at three in the morning. Yeah. You know, the reverse back kicks and shit. And I'm going, fuck. Uh, and then his acting, his acting was very natural. And it's like, you know, I could see him very easily, you know, finding a niche in the movie uh, movie business. Yeah, and for those listening, we're talking about Cerrone, obviously Donald Cerrone, cowboy. When we say cowboy, um, but yeah, I, I can see that. I totally can see him, him, him falling into the movies, and 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 Diego too. Oh, yeah. You know, Diego doing the tapia. I saw him on Instagram talk about getting the tapia, or, or the tapia yeah. story, um, and getting that role and stuff. I can see that happening as well. Like like that's going to be interesting. And you had a role in that, I think, right? Well, because there's no actor, very there, there's no actors that can play can really pull off a fighter, especially like, I mean, when De Niro did Raging Bull, Scorsese shot it in black and white, and he did it in a very stylized way. Right. So like, some retard like De Niro could pull off being a fighter, you know? Uh, because they shot it stylized. Uh now you go, let's take, you take the Stallone movies. Stallone is a, is a, has always, always an athlete. You know, he played football. He was, you know, always in the gym. Uh, he loves the sport. And I did a movie with him once where we had a fight scene. And he hired me just because he said, I need somebody who looks like they can kick my ass. And I go, I'm right here. <laughs> and uh, I remember I was real I was real broke at the time. I'm so glad they get the movie. And we had this big fight scene. And I remember throwing a left hook at him. And then the adrenaline went shooting up past my ankles all the way out of my shoulders because I came so close to him. Like I came less than a quarter of an inch. Wow. And I cranked the left hook, and I, oh, I thought, oh, fuck, I'm going to get fired. I'm going to, you know, I just, uh, and I didn't hit him. Yeah. But what, what I what I admired about him, he didn't move an inch. Yeah. Not an inch. And I went, he's got some balls, yeah. you know, <laughs> because the what I don't like to do, and I'll be real honest with you, I don't like doing fight scenes in movies. I've been cracked twice, really hard. And when you're doing a fight scene in a movie, it's usually an actor who doesn't know how to throw a punch or never did. Yeah. But I got cork from some guy that was like six foot four, you know, 230, and he wanted to stop, and I said, "No, keep going," because I didn't want to do it again with him, you know. Yeah. But I, I don't. I myself don't like to do fight scenes in movies. It's. Uh, uh, I had one scene I had to do one movie I, I did a while back where I was supposed to be teaching a kid how to how to fight. And first of all, I had to teach him how to stand. Then I had to teach him how to throw a jab, and then a jab and a right and a left and another, and it was like. It's all okay during rehearsal, but when the camera's on, you know, the other guy who's not used to doing punching isn't going to be able to control his shit, and right. you're going to get hurt. Yeah. So I'm there. So I said to the director, I said, who's the stunt, who's the stunt coordinator for the fight scene going to be? And he pointed to some fucking guy sitting there with a piece of weed in his mouth. And he was like a local who never coordinated anything in his life. So I, I, so I looked at the guy and I said, what's he, what's he coordinated before? And he said, well, nothing. And I said, I said, I said, I said, well, I'm not doing a fight scene with him being the choreographer. And he says, Mickey, we don't have time to bring in somebody to, I said, I just had $130,000 worth of, implants put in i said i'm not gonna get hit in the mouth the kid weighed a buck 20 
it would, but still, if you're not expecting it, yeah, you know, exactly. it hurts. Yeah, I can imagine. So the director goes, no, I'm not bringing somebody in. I said, okay, I'm going to make you a deal, I told the director. And he was a first-time director from Australia. He goes, he wrote the thing, too. So I said to him, I'll tell you what. If I get hit in the mouth, I said, I'm not going to hit the kid. But I'm going to come over. I'm going to knock out every fucking tooth in your mouth. Let me tell you something. They had my stunt coordinator on the plate an hour later. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, no, but... And and you and when they when they ended up, his name is Johnny C. Great stunt coordinator. It was four hours. It took him four hours to do the fight scene, and I'm thinking, if they didn't have that guy Johnny C. there, you know, uh, it would have been a disaster with some guy that never yeah. uh, coordinated a fight before. Yeah, because there's a big difference, you know. You know, we. we fight as pros or whatever we learn to hide everything you know it's it's quick and short and quick but you know when you're doing the movie you got to open it up so they can read it you know yeah. so it's it's almost like it's every it's everything you taught you were taught not to do yeah so it's almost twice as hard to do it yeah yeah i can imagine getting hit when you don't expect it and then just smash your your teeth together yeah. like that. That's got to suck. Well, I, I also saw a movie. I think it was around, around one of the first movies I ever did where two actors were doing a fight scene and this big son of a bitch hit this little guy in the nose. He must have had 12 stitches and there was just blood squirting out all over. So from that day on, I was always just very aware of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's like they say, there's no, there's no play fighting, you know, no. they don't call it, we play basketball, we play baseball, we don't play fight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I see what you're saying. I see. So, so me, fight scenes in movies just bore the hell out of me. Yeah. What do you think about Habib's uh, retirement now that he announces retirement and then he's holding a press conference here coming up soon, I think on December 2nd. So they're going to announce something, but it seems like he's retired at this stage. And, and as an, as a 29 and no undefeated MMA fighter, he's, he, you know, I'll tell you the real deal. There ain't nobody can beat him. Nobody. And I don't, I never seen anybody want to have a rematch with him. I mean, Gagey, maybe like gagey has got balls like watermelons. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's, you know, he's everybody loves dude. to watch Gagey fight. No, he cleaned out the division for sure. He absolutely did. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he's got anything more to prove like it. It's like, I think when you're that great at something, you know, you move on. Yeah. You know, it's okay. What does he want to do? Hang around till he's 45 and get beat? He's got a lot of business endeavors too. A lot of business opportunities yeah. now. No, he, he's, he's, he's a once in a lifetime kind of, kind of guy. When he go, you know, I mean... He, you know, he's got good, he's got real good hands for a guy who's great on the ground. Yeah. You know, so he had the whole package, but his, his ground game is just insane. Yeah. It's incredible. Um, yeah. yeah, totally incredible. Um, so I got to ask you, what else do you have going on in, in, uh, in your life? I've been following you, man. I've, I've watched your, your hot boxing with the Mike Tyson. I've seen your Pierce Morgan interview in New York. Um, I've seen all your stuff. So, so what, what, what do you have on the film realm? Well, I've got six films on hold because of the coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I need to do like at least three of them quick because I owe the IRS a lot of money. Um, <laughs> what I'm very excited about is after all these years, I finally get to do a, I'm going to do a movie with Al Pacino. Oh, wow. And I'm really excited. I'm so happy about that. Like, Shit, that's you know, I don't news. get happy working with most actors, but I'm I'm like a little kid with that. Yeah. Oh, you got to be. Yeah. yeah, that's incredible. Like you and Al Pacino. Wow. I had no idea. That's crazy. But it's not even a serious movie. It's Pinocchio. <laughs> Pinocchio. Pinocchio. Oh, wow. I know. Neither one of us are Pinocchio. Uh, is it going to be animated? No. Oh, not animated. Okay. No, 
Um, but I'm so excited about it. I already picked out my wardrobe. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not going to happen for like four months. Wow. That's incredible, though. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's like, yeah, like a dream come true. That's so awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, the movie I did with Bella Thorne, uh, she got like Oscar reviews on it. And, you know, she kicked ass. Uh, uh, she really enjoyed the movie and working with the director. Uh, I enjoyed working with her and hated working with the director. So it's like, uh, I wish her all, she's a really good actress and she really, uh, she works really hard to be the best she can be. Right. You know, it's like, she's not never satisfied with the, you know, she's a perfectionist that way, which on most movies I am too. If I like the material and the director, right. If I don't, if I don't like the director, we just call it mail it in. Yeah. <laughs> nice. But a ma mailing it in with authority. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. but it was, it was it was so it was fun to work with Bella Thorne at least. Uh yeah yeah. I heard a lot of it great things fun. about her. And she's 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 a she's a little you know she's an oddball you know she's you know she brings a different different color to the table you know uh, she's very she's colorful very outspoken she's not shy. She's her own person, you know, and I respect that. Yeah. Uh, and she's different. Yeah. And uh, I like it when you don't when you don't know what somebody's going to bring and it's une uh, unexpected or how they're going to deliver it. Yeah. You know. That's awesome. But I'm looking forward to yeah. seeing all the stuff that you got coming up, especially with Pacino, um, and then obviously Diego's film and and, and Cowboys as well. Um, I, I saw a photo uh, on, on Dima's Instagram the other day from Mulberry Pizza. So I left a comment because it reminded me back when we were at Mulberry's Pizza eating in Beverly Hills. Yeah. And, and that was so good. And, like, I haven't been in the States for so long. And, like, I crave the food and the, and the places that I love eating there. And I saw that, that picture with, with uh, him at Mulberry's Pizza with you. And I was just like, oh, man, I that's really what, want a pizza. That's where you and I met, right? That, that was where we met last time that I was in L.A., yeah. Uh, yeah, because you know what? I only I only go out of the house one day a week in the daytime, and that's Saturday, which is my the day that I don't do my diet. It's my cheat day. Yeah. And I go to Mulberry Pizza. It's so good. Saturday for one hour. But now it's total. It's yeah. they shut it down. Yeah, I can imagine. It, it's scary. Yeah. It's scary what's going on because we just see the news, so we see the highlights, and it's like. Technically low lights. It just it just looks like 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 the yeah the the apocalypse. It's crazy with all the stuff going on. Yeah, but you know you know you could you could take you know I'm taking the time to get myself in really great shape to eating really clean to uh, experimenting with different uh, uh, high protein low carb diets or or uh, doing sit ups in different ways or do or uh, doing my weights differently. Uh, I'll call up people that, that do that all the time or, or I see on the Instagram, I go, wow, look at, and I'll, you know, I ask what, what you you know, what's your diet? Because lots of times you could be on a particular diet and if it's the same diet all the time, your body gets used to it. Right. So you got to make a drastic change to shock your body. The same thing with like, exercises yeah you know yeah so i mean you know i'm trying to make the best out of the out of a terrible scary situation that uh i don't i don't like los angeles so i i know i never really go out here anyway i've kind of turned into like you know i would go to the boxing gym and the weightlifting gym and that would be my you know that would be my social life. You miss New York, right? I miss New York a lot, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm buying a place after I can take care of the IRS. Uh, 30 minutes outside of New York in the country. Nice. Yeah. So I can, I can build my gym there. And I already talked to two guys that live in New Jersey, Mickey Gall, yeah. And Frankie Edgar, yeah. I already said, 
I started up with my jujitsu. My goal is to get a black belt in 10 years. And nice. uh, when I put my mind to a goal, I do it. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, I was working with a kid from 10th Planet here, Epstein. And uh, but I, I'm not take I can't take the chance of the, what might be on the mat or what, you know, yeah, whatever. Right. But it's like there's going to come a day where I got to stop getting hit in the head. And, you know, uh, and I, I, I like the challenge of, of saying, OK, that's going to take me 10 years. Fine. You know, I'm yeah. cool with that, you know, because they said Elvis Presley had a black belt. But it's like, you know. You got to earn, you got to earn it. You yeah. know, you got to, you know, I know guys that have black belts that like, forget about it. They gave himself a black belt. You know, I don't give a fuck if it takes me three years to get a blue belt. You know, it, I enjoy, I've always enjoyed sports more than acting. You know, I mean, baseball and football, I, I miss, I would give anything to be in a football game for one quarter. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like uh, I'd rather play in a football game on as a linebacker for one quarter than win Academy Award. Wow. Yeah. So you do like. Well, sports. I love I love the camaraderie and, the you know, in the locker room and, the, and also the, the fear and adrenaline playing football like before a kickoff, you know, and we're all smacking our pads ready to go and like smash something to pieces, you know. Yeah, I remember you said to Pierce Morgan that you'd rather have uh, a boxing belt than a Academy Award as well. So that that said a lot of the same. Yeah. Well, that was something that I gave up on when I got injured three times and I quit. And it, I, I, it's, I don't, I don't think I'll ever forgive myself for not going back to it. But if I would have continued my career. Uh, and turn pro really young, you know, I'd probably be punchy and working in it as a dishwasher because uh, I had no discipline at all. Right. I, I had one foot in the ring, one foot in the street. Yeah. You know, uh, the reason I learned to box when I was young is I lived in a very hard ass neighborhood in Miami where you had to fight. And I was like a I was like a pussy coward till I was like ten or eleven, and then I had my first fight, street fight. Mm -hmm. Then I had my second, third, fourth, and then I, I then I started training, uh, spot in the amateurs with the police athletic league, did really good, and there was a light heavyweight champion of the world who came there and we became friends. His name was Willie Pastrano. God bless him. Mm -hmm. And he gave me like specials, you know, I worked extra hard on it, put a, put a speed bag up when I was like 12, every, you know, every day I'd do the speed bag, you know, and I just fell in love with it. And, uh, and then I really fell in love with it after I beat up my first bully. That satisfaction. You know? of there's nothing worse than bully and there's nothing worse the feeling after you kick a bully's ass. Yeah. And then it was on. I've been fighting ever since. I mean, I love to fight. And unfortunately, I still fight in the street. But my entertainment attorney said to me, he said, do you know you've paid $780,000 in, what's it called? Uh, uh, Fines. Charge. And, yeah, yeah, restitution. Yeah. yeah. So about a year ago, something happened, right? And I just, I just tapped the guy. On the chin, so I tapped him. It was fucking forty grand, and I purposely didn't hit him like and for where there would be any blood. You know, I didn't hit him a hook or a right hand. I hit him a right jab, right on the chin, right here, just so there wouldn't be any mess. But he thought I was looking at his girlfriend, or whatever, and he he gave me what's called you know the hairy eyeball, and I'm looking at him. And then about a half hour later, I couldn't believe it. I'm going out the back door and I was with a smoking hot Russian girl. I wasn't looking at that skank girlfriend of his. And as I'm going out the back door, there's only about two foot of room. He stands in front of me and blocks my path. And I said, motherfucker, what's your problem? 
and he says, fuck. And before he said you, I corked him right here. Just I hit him. I hit him a, a punch I don't throw. I hit him a right jab just because you know, he said he disrespected me. But it's like, I'm never not going to be able. If somebody says, fuck you, and they're blocking your path, you know. I mean, if, in L.A., if you yell at somebody, you can get arrested. Yeah. But, you know, 40 grand or whatever for that. What, what I thought about afterward, number one, I want to get my career back in place. I don't need to be known as shit going on in the street. Right. When I, when I was married to a girl that had a heroin problem, I put three or four heroin dealers in the hospital. Yeah. Okay. That, you know, because that was my girl. And you're gonna give her, you're gonna be giving her drugs? No fucking way. Yeah. But unfortunately, I'm not the kind of guy that can like, okay, I'm gonna wait for him to come out of the restaurant, and I'll get him as he rounds the corner. No, I go right into the fucking restaurant, and I try not to do that anymore. Yeah. But also, you got to be with the right girl, you know, because if you're with the wrong girl, or if I'm with the wrong girl, I don't ever want to be with the wrong girl again, you know. I mean. Yeah. Because, you know, the shit that they write in the paper, it gives you a bad reputation. And then people think that, you know, oh, God, we don't want to work with him. Right. And they've been saying that about me for 20 years now. So I want it to go away. Yeah. So I want to be as good as I can be. You know, I do. I, you know, I do believe you can reinvent yourself. And I've had 23 years of therapy and uh, you can change. Change is hard. My psychiatrist used to say, Mickey change is hard yeah. <laughs> and he would say to me this is going to him 23 years two and three days a week he'd say to me uh you can't because i used to sometimes try to skip going to him yeah he go he go mickey I, i'd come in a mess crying uh, and he go mickey you can't come and see me when the house is burning down you got to come and see me before the house burns down right that makes sense you know but thank God for him. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my psychiatrist and, and my priest friend. And, and I lost both of them. So now I got Dima. Yeah. Well, I can tell from following you that there's a lot of stuff going on with you that's positive and good. And, uh, and, and, and you're doing a lot of great stuff. And, and this movie I'm looking forward to with Pacino and, and all these other things. I want to see the one with Bella Thorne as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited the one for with, you. The one with Bella Thorne is called Girl. Girl. Girl, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. And, and I'm happy you for should, you. You should, you should interview Bella. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to. You got to put me in contact yeah. with her because I would, I would absolutely love to talk to her. I'll do that, yeah. I would absolutely love to. Yeah. Well, man, I, I I know this was a short notice podcast, and and uh, we 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 made it happen, and and you took the time out for me again, and I appreciate that so much. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for being on the podcast and and giving me your time and your opinion and and uh, all your latest thank, updates. Hey, thank you, thank you for all watching you all the great Saturday nights, all the all the great times you fought. And, well, I I appreciate that you enjoyed it. <laughs> I appreciate I, it. even even watching you. Watching you win or watching you lose, you always put on one hell of a fight. Thank you, sir. And I used to say to myself, that's one guy I would never want to fight. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, I, I, yeah. I try to lay it on the line, you know. Yeah, you did. You still do. Thank you so much. You always will. Thank you. You're always going to be a fighter, even if you're on that radio. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that, and that means a lot to me coming from you. And uh, 2020 has been the worst year I think for everybody and I just can't wait for it to end and move on to 2021. Hopefully it's a better year for all of us. Hopefully these movies get unlocked for you that you've been working on. And I hope you, I, I hope you get your gym going again and, you know, putting some money in your pocket and, you know, God bless you and your family. Well, thank you. And you're supposed to come uh, over here. Don't forget. So I'm still holding you to that. Yeah. What, what, yeah. As soon as I pay off the IRS some money and I can afford to, <laughs> Oh yeah, we gotta bring you over here and have a good time in Thailand because I think I can show you some really fun things to do here in Phuket. So I'm holding you to that. We will get you here in Phuket, and uh, uh, we're gonna have some fun. Well, you know, like they say, tomorrow's promise to no one. But <laughs> if I'm around, I'll come. All right, I'm gonna hold uh, you to that. God bless you, brother.
Thank you so much, man. Great talking to you. God bless you too. All right, Mickey Rourke, always a great podcast. Um, it's great to have him back on again. It's great to uh, catch up. I've been following what he's been doing. He's been doing a lot of stuff. He's been doing a lot of work. He's been helping out a lot of people. That's one thing he always does. He's always helping people, helping fighters specifically. He's got. Uh, he's helped Diego get this film with uh, Tapia, the Tapia story. Um, he's helping Cowboy with the, the Commando movie. And uh, obviously he's doing his own stuff as well, now working with Al Pacino. Um, he did the film with Bella Thorne. Hopefully I'll have her on the podcast and he'll be able to do that. That'll be amazing. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please leave us a comment on YouTube, uh, like subscribe, um, click the bell, uh, leave us a review on all the audio platforms that, that are out there. We appreciate the support. We love the feedback. We love interacting with you guys and we'll see you next time. <laughs>